Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we'll be building the heading indicator. For this build, you'll need two stepper motors and their drivers, an Arduino Mega, all of these 3D printed parts, a laser cut acrylic faceplate, you can leave this out, M3 screws, two rotary encoders, two 5x5x5mm magnets, a magnet with a clear indication of north and south pole, two Hall Effect switches, these turn on whenever you get near a magnet, basically, as well as these jumper wires. In addition to these jumper wires, it's recommended that you solder these Hall Effect sensors. If you want this all as a convenient kit, you can buy one at CaptainBobSim.com shop. A link is in the description below. Let's start out with this piece. I've already started here and put in a Hall Effect switch. Looking at the side with ridges, the wiring is red, black, white. You can place that inside here, bend the legs, and then it's red, black, white. Next, we can put in our stepper motors. In the updated model, there should be a line right here that tells you, oh hey, these two screws belong to the st same stepper motor. Use the M3 6mm or 8mm screws and fix this to the base. I designed it so that you shouldn't need any nuts right here, but you can attach them if need be. This just taps directly into the plastic. Now for the second motor. Now we can connect these rotor encoders and the last Hall Effect switch. We have our last Hall Effect switch here. I just heat shrunk the middle so that these two outer ones wouldn't touch with the middle one and uh, it would be all protected and not shorty and stuff. You can put this whole assembly up through the hole and in right here. You might need to bend it a little bit. This just should snap in uh, and if you need to you can use glue. And for this the beveled side faces up for both of these. Bezel side faces towards the middle and bezel side faces up. Now we're done with this part, and my laundry is done too. This brings us onto our next components. This gear wheel, this gear, and some blue root beer. Wait, this is laundry detergent. How'd that slip in there? I, I tried too hard. We can put this gear ring into this backing plate, and it should turn all well and dandy. If it doesn't, Take the gear ring and file it down wherever there's a little bit extra goop. You can see right here, this is where the 3D printer always ends its layer. And so just sand this little bit off and it'll be more spinny than you can ever imagine. You can also adjust your 3D printer settings to minimize this and that'll make you not have to file it. The first step with this wheel is to add its little bug right here. This is printed in orange. Um, unless you're colorblind, you can print it in yellow. Now just screw this through the bug. Then once it goes through, push it onto the wheel. Now we have this buggy gear wheel. Yay! One more thing we need is a magnet on this buggy gear wheel. It's a magnetic buggy gear wheel. This is the front of the hull switch, and this is a north-south pole magnet. When the south pole gets near this, it clicks on, then when it leaves it clicks off. So we need the south pole to be near the Hall Effect switch. My favorite way to do this is to grab it with the north pole and then shove it in through this hole. That way this is the south pole and it'll hit the switch. Bing! If you need to, you can glue it in. I've had enough of your freaking yelling today. I don't even care. Now, with our assembled assembly, we can put it into our other assembled assembly. Woohoo! Assemble! Now just test to make sure that nothing hits these walls. You don't have like a whole Hercules situation. That would be awkward. And make sure that it turns smoothly. You may need to sand certain places on either of these assemblies. Now put in this drive gear. Make sure that things actually turn once you drive it. 
Don't know why it's called a drive gear, because, I mean, like, it can't go anywhere, it just spins around. I'm kidding. Now, we have this Picasso, and we can put it to the side. If you're building this on the day of, I hope you have a fantabulous Valentine's Day. Now that I think about it, the simulator is the longest relationship I've ever been in. <laughs> relationship. We have this piece right here, and we're going to do the same thing to it. We have these magnets. Find, use the north to find the south. And then use the south to be where the south is. Press it in and then make sure it's flush right here. For the compass decal, you'll need the label printed out either on a just normal piece of paper and glue it to the decal or I'm using a shipping label. I always like to loosely cut it. Before I can go in more finely. There should be a tick mark about right here that tells you where to align your north. Look at that and align your north. Make sure when you cut the number wheel, you don't cut to the edge because there's a little bit of space. Now you can cut around the edges and you're all good to go. Once you have your decal on, like I don't, you can put this wheel into here and make sure to slide it under the bug. Then just kind of massage it into place. There we go. The main idea here is that this bug here moves independently from this wheel here. Now we can push this to the side again. I know it gets lonely, but whatever. And we can grab these three pieces. This plane here is printed in white, and then the edges are painted orange. Let's start by putting in the glass, putting in this airplane. Whoops. Then you can just kind of snap it down. Ta-da! Make sure it's all clean. You don't want to put fingerprints inside your simulator. Now we have these caps and these rods. These rods should just... These rods should just fit snugly over these encoders. Now just attach the faceplate and use the 15 millimeter screws to screw it into these standoffs, these 3D printed ones. The holes should be a little bit undersized so that the screws can actually grip the plastic. And then after you have this attached, you can just attach these buttons. It's recommended you attach these after you fix the instrument in the panel, but um, I'm not going to make you a little cute panel for this video, although that would be adorable. For the lettering, I'm going to use my desired text method on 3D printing, which is paint. I just had white. I'm going to paint these orange in the future once the paint pen arrives. You can also use the blank knob version and just uh, glue on a decal instead. We're almost done with everything. We just have to solder these rotor encoders. We have a lot of 5 volts and grounds coming off of this. Let's make this easier and combine them so you, we can combine all of the grounds and all of the 5 volts and the grounds can also attach to these rotary encoders here. If you have a KY040, you can attach the 5 volts um, to the KY040 as well. The name of the game is making sure that this ground wire goes to everywhere it needs to. So we already showed you where it needs to go for the Hall effect switches but it needs to go on the middle pin right here for this rotary encoder and one of the switch pins here. So I'll just do that now. I also did this whole zip tie shebang way too early. I forgot about the rotary encoders. For the rotary encoders, I'm stripping and soldering the grounds together. I have a few soldering resources in the description below. This here is some wire you use for like circuit boards to like bridge traces. For the rotary encoders, I'm using these DuPont connectors. They're linked in the description below. Well, I mean, it worked. Like, these three are connected. You can, of course, just go start and just hop around until you finish the ground, and then the last one, you just tie.
touch of ground to an Arduino, but I thought this this would look cool, maybe. You know, kind of looks like a fork. Okay, you know what? Just please stop taking a shower. I'm sorry. Just just stop. Okay. Doesn't this look beautiful? You just kind of need to straighten it out. So it's kind of like braiding hair. You want to make it all like together and crap. I've never really braided hair. I've done it once, but I'm pretty sure you like straighten it out. Um, and then it's right over left, left over right. No, we're not going to braid this. Um, but just make sure they're all straight. Make sure it's all clean. Pull this out. Then we have our ground, our inputs, our five volts, and then our two uh, zero inputs right here. So now, for wiring, <laughs> oh, it's going to be pretty uh, ugly. So now, you're not even done yet, because these require a stepper board. So, you can bring your stepper motor boards in, plug them in, oops. Then, each of these require four wires that go to the Arduino, a positive and a negative. Whoa, <laughs> this is a lot of wiring. I'm actually making a circuit board that will make this a lot easier. The circuit board will simplify the rotary encoder wiring, just slap those in, solder them up. It'll also have onboard motor drivers, so you can just plug it into the circuit board and it'll be all good to go. If you're interested in simplified wiring, look in the description below for more details. If you have a label maker, it might be helpful to label each individual strand, like A, B, um, encoder, left encoder, A, B, etc. I'm just going to figure it out later, um, which sometimes works out nicely, sometimes doesn't. Now let's wire this to the Arduino. We can start out with the easy ones. Black is ground, red is positive, 5 volts. The rest of these we all know are inputs, so I'm just going to plug them in sequentially in the board, and then we're going to troubleshoot and recorrect them. There's six wires, so that means there are only 36 possible combinations, right? I think. Yeah? Maybe? Okay, let's plug them in. Uh, one in 36 chance we are going to guess it right. And now, uh, for these stepper motors. I'm going to start with this zeroing pin right here. I don't know which one it is. I didn't label it, which I probably should have now that we are pointing fingers. Then we have four of these jumper wires. We're going to take them from IN1 through 4 all the way to the next available pins. Make sure not to cross. On the next one, I'll do the same. IN1 through 4 goes to IN1 through 4. And right before this stepper motor, I'm going to put the last of the input pins, the zero pins. Plug this in, and voila. Last thing to do is to connect the plus 5 volt and the negative uh, to 5 volt and ground, respectively. I hate when people say that, respectively. I never thought it would be reasonable to use a circuit board for an instrument unless I needed backlighting. Today, my uh, horizons have been expanded. We have it all connected up, let's move on to the software. This needs three screws, two here and one there. My panel doesn't have this one drilled. For the six pack, I just designed these two Arduino mounts right here. They mount directly to the back of an instrument using standoff spacers. You can find this in the GitHub. It takes a lot of trial and error to make complicated designs like this. A lot of the earlier designs were really convoluted with micro switch mechanisms that really weren't reliable. So I'm really glad I came up with this final solution. If you want to support development work like this, you can do so on Patreon or through PayPal donations. I've linked these in the description below. All of these failures weigh in at 0.2 kilograms, which is 0.2 kilograms that you don't have to waste failing. <laughs> So, let's go. <laughs> I want to say thank you so much to the current patrons and supporters, Altimeter Motives, Bromi, Chris, David, EC Drew, Gerald, who is actually a huge motivation in this video, Juan Fortas, 
Coffinator, Russell, and Yamil. You guys are incredible. Now that we've concluded this video, I know where you're all heading <laughs> to part two once it comes out. I really enjoyed this build. You can find all of the files to this in the link in the description below, in the GitHub, and on printables. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Stay spicy and have a fantabulous rest of your day.